So how do you create a brand that truly represents who you are and the products you sell, as well as building a business that you can scale online? That is what this podcast will help you do. My name is Henry Kaminsky Jr. and welcome to the Brand Doctor Podcast. Let me just make this statement loud and clear. Church is here. Church is here. What is shaking, everybody? Welcome to another Brand Doctor Podcast episode. We got two in a row, two back to back. In the same day, we're live streaming. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is a huge topic that I want to talk about. It's how to hire A players to build your brand. And I have an amazing gentleman with us today by the name of Eric Reed. What is going on, my man? Hey, uh, thanks for having me, Henry. Uh, I, love, uh, I love the way that uh, your show flows, and I'm excited to get on here and talk to you a little bit. Dude, when I read your bio and I, I, I dug in a little bit, uh -huh. I was like, I cannot wait for this episode. People need to hear this. Oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I love to talk about it. So hopefully it's a good fit. I mean, hopefully it has some energy behind it. Oh, it will. Believe me when I tell you. So yeah. like every show, I want to take a couple of minutes and have you introduce yourself and sure. let everybody know how you got to where you're at and really establish your credibility and expertise here. And then we'll get into the deep stuff. Okay, great. So what I've done throughout my career is I've rebuilt uh, sales and marketing teams. I started actually about 20 some years ago in the alternative industry, you know, Village Voice, Detroit Metro Times, uh, these these publications that come out that every city has them. These, uh, they're digital now, but they were print converting to digital uh, in the alternative space. And basically those organizations needed to compete with the USA Today networks, the large media companies. And so, you know, I got in there because I like I like live music. I love events. I love art. I love culture. And hey, I love to talk sales and marketing and work with people who are hungry to learn. And so that was just a great environment. And so, you know, I did that for a company called Nouveau in Indianapolis. I jumped on with a company called Time Shamrock that owned four or five of these alternatives throughout the country. And then I got the opportunity being from Detroit that I was, you know, would love to have gotten, which was getting on uh, with the Detroit Metro Times, which was part of that time shamrock. Um, and so I kind of, you know, built out non-traditional revenue, built out sales teams uh, with, uh, you know, people who maybe didn't know how good of a salesperson they were, but helped them get there and then took these uh, marketing departments and kind of built the go-to-market strategy uh, to be competitive in these spaces so we could be taken seriously with our audiences for real estate, the, the, the more typical business that went to your dailies and not so much to your weeklies. Um, and that was just really, you know, that was just really exciting. And I got a reputation of coming in and being able to fix things. And, and just a secret to everybody, uh, if people tell you they know exactly how to fix things, there is no magic recipe. You, you just got to have the right attitude. You got to buy into the culture. You got to create a culture. Uh, but there's no magic recipe uh, outside of just being willing to try some things and understand the general rules of what you're trying to build. Um, and then after that, um, I actually got involved in some startups uh, with on the tech side, again, through through connections and contacts with some hedge fund companies that were investing in a lot of different uh, startups. Um, I kind of was asked to come in at that point to build, um, you know, sales departments, build call centers, just do the kind of things that would build a culture in a marketing and sales universe. And so, you know, for me, that has served me well, where I could then go out on my own uh, later in life, bringing us up to where we're here, where I could work with clients who are in that state. Right now, what's going on, um, there's a lot of fractional marketing going on. So I'm kind of finding my expertise is being able to help companies that aren't, they're not failing. If you're failing, you don't need me. You maybe have some other things you have to deal with. Companies that I like to work with are ones that are at this crossing point. Maybe they're just kind of plateaued. They like what's going on, but how do we get to the next level? And so I come in and work with them. Um, maybe they can't, they're not ready to hire a marketing director, a marketing manager, a sales director, a VP. And so I work with the CEOs and the executive team to kind of fractionally lead them until they're ready and we bring somebody in to take that position. Nice, 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 nice. So you know a thing or two about hiring the right people, putting them in the right spots and creating the right culture to excel the brand. I think so. I mean, I've always got a lot to learn. We all do, but, uh, sure. what I've been, you know, what I, what I do, I think works as long as you understand what, 
you know, the circle has to fit in the circle. They have to create the culture first, but then, you know, there's things you look for. All right. So we're going to get into creating that culture and finding those A players right after this quick little message. If you're a business owner who feels your branding isn't truly representing the value that you deliver, check out this free video training that will help you level up your brand's messaging and online presence so that you can start attracting higher quality clients. Visit www.uniquedesigns with a Z at the end, not an S. Dot net backslash level up my branding. All right. So let's get into this, Eric. So okay. building company culture, where does, where do you start? How do you establish it? Well, I think, I mean, it's a great question because the word culture, if you say, Hey, what's your company culture? Like somebody will say, Oh, we can wear jeans on Friday and I can be like 10 minutes late or I can work from home because I'm doing daycare or my, you know, whatever the situation is. That's not culture. That's just being a, that's just being a human in today's world. You know what I mean? So the culture is not those little things. The culture is actually, it, it starts with the executive team. And you know, I'll use for, to answer that question, let, let's stay focused on about a, um, you know, a, a one, a 250 down to 50 uh, person uh, employee company. So more on your small, uh, to small to mid size. And the culture is driven by the vision of the company. You know, comp all companies want to have their mission statement or their vision. You know, I would say on a, off on a tangent that, you know, if we were to ask people, most companies very, you know, you're not going to get more than 50% who can recite what that is. So that's the, that's the first problem with the culture. You can't, have a culture if the people who work from top to bottom don't know what the vision of the company is. So I think the first important thing to do is really understand, hey, if you don't have a vision, that's okay. I mean, it's, you're, you know, you're still, you're in business. It's not going to mean you're not going to be business tomorrow, but you, it, it is an important thing to establish. If you want to create a culture, it starts with your leadership team and maybe even some leaders at some point from your departments and just say, listen, we need to create a winning culture here. The first thing that we have to do is create a vision. And then, you know, you've got to go through some exercises to get that vision. Once you create that vision, that's all well and good. You can, you can stencil it up on a wall. You can put it out in memos to the company, but every, everybody has to buy into that at the leadership level and then roll it out. And again, I'm saying stuff that people would be like, well, come on, this is, we all know this, we all hear it. And I, I won't argue that. My question will be how how often do we actually do it and stick to it because we get comfortable and we don't realize the importance of it. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> we can talk about this until we're blue in the face, but if right. you don't do it, yeah, it's yeah. it means nothing. Look at what Joshua Easter, one of our one of our live listeners, said. Culture is driven by mission of the company. It starts with the leadership. Eric Reed, exactly. Eric is uh, uh, Eric is one of our avid live listeners who always contributes and he will take these little zingers that you and I say today and he will highlight them as we go. Um, I also want to encourage people that are watching and tuning in live to answer any questions. If you have any questions for Eric or I, please drop them in the comments and we will get them answered because it's a great topic. It's an important topic. And to what Eric just said about you know, you could talk about culture until you're purple in the face or say, yeah, 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 I know all this stuff. Yeah. Unless you do it, it's not going to make any sense. And then you're constantly going to hire the wrong people. And yeah, that's I mean, something that I want to talk about. Yeah. And that's true in anything, really, if you think about it, Henry, because, uh, you know, we, we, I can have, you know, I'll just get a personal side, not too deep, but I can have conversations with my wife all day long about, okay, yep, you're right that was, you know, I, this is the way that we want to handle that in the future, et cetera, et cetera. That might be great to, to move on from that conversation, but if nothing changes, nothing's changed. So, I mean, it's obvious again, but discipline and commitment to staying the course is what's going to make the difference. Exactly. And I think that's what, you know, when I hear people bitching and moaning about, oh, I can't find the right guy or gal to do this, or can't mm -hmm. find the right gal or guy to do that. Well, are you clear with your expectations? That's yep. my that's my first question because if you're not clear with your expectations, you're probably going to be disappointed. And that yeah. comes from company culture, right? That starts with company culture. Right. Well, I say absolutely. I I say, you know, I I've said this a lot. I talk about this a little bit. And again, this isn't rocket science stuff, and if you research it, it's out there, you know. 
Um, but the reality is there's, there's something called the right person in the wrong chair, and there's something called the wrong person in the, in the right chair. A lot of different business strategists will talk about that in different terms. But at the end of the day, it means the right person is the wrong chair. Is they're a cultural fit. They're right for the company. They're exactly the kind of person that's going to you know work with you and, and hold the line and dig in and, and they see the vision. But you've got them in the wrong chair. So they might be not doing good at the job. So you know, they don't need to be fired. You just you, there's a disservice going on because it's not a right fit for the job. The other thing is you got the right person in the in the wrong chair, or excuse me, the wrong person in the right chair, and that is it's the right job that you need to fill. But you've got somebody who's not a cultural fit. I, they might be crushing it, absolutely killing it on the number, but they're a cultural problem, and that's going to erode the rest of the team. And so some of this challenge of getting the right person is is slowing down and realizing, boy, this person could probably get my numbers right back on track in the next thirty days. But I, I challenge you to look a little bit deeper down the road than that because it's going to be a problem. And that and that's kind of where I kind of rest with culture is I don't ask people to sell me that they can do the job in an interview. I don't care about that because, A, if you're going to tell me you can anyway, and, and we won't know until you know the rubber hits the pavement. I want to know that you're a cultural fit because if you're not a cultural fit, this interview is over. There's no right. point for me to go forward, even if you come with the highest credentials of sales and closing and whatever I'm looking for. I'm gonna have some real problems if you don't if you don't fit our culture, and that's why it's important to come all the way down because you can't hire a sustainable A team if you're not clear on getting the right cultural. You're not clear on getting the the people who fit the culture. Amazing. My question next is. For us entrepreneurs that are hiring A players that want to find somebody that can connect to our culture or align with it, mm -hmm. are there any pointed questions that we could use to when we're in the process of hiring somebody, whether it be a service-based business or a vendor yeah. or, a or a team player that's going to come on board more, more, um, you know, uh, in house, if you will, yeah. uh, is there any questions that we can use to well, find that out? Well, I think the answer is yes, but the answer is also a very cautious, it's a cautious yes. Cause once you start diving into culture and start talking about expectations and different things like that, they're very important. You know, there's, there's some certain, you gotta be careful when you get into the interview process. Cause you can't, you know, it, it needs to be, uh, a legitimate good interview that doesn't cross any lines. And right. so for me with the, the cult, there's really, you know, I can't say, Hey, do you, would you mind working till 10 o'clock every, let me, let me answer that by first flipping this on its head real quick. Mm -hmm. The reciprocal of this is somebody who wants, and this is a cultural question too, if you're interviewing for a job, you know, and, and we'll be able to answer your question by understanding this. I, I always believe that you need to ask who's the best employer, who's the example of what an employee in this position should look like what does that look like and 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 what's their name and then tell me why because i want to hear what that company or what that person feels is the a player they're looking for because if they describe somebody that's not me no matter how bad i want that job that's a problem and so i know from my chair i'm not going to fit their culture and so to flip that back to your question it's not so much about asking specific questions we're, we're coached so much to to stop talking and listen and and this will you know, this is going to be against the grain here. I say talk more and li and not listen less, but you do more of the talking in the interview. I don't need to hear a life story of how you got to where you're at. I'm intelligent enough to read your resume, fill me in on some gaps if I have some questions. What I really want to do is I want to be talking about what a day in the life looks like in my company. I want to be talking about the person that I'm looking for. And as I'm doing that, I'm trying to pick up on verbal, I'm trying to pick up on some of the nonverbal cues, you know, to get their opinion of what I'm talking about. Um, it's a challenge. We've hired, we've all hired people that we think are going to be rock stars and they tank. We hire people that we think we want to take a chance on. And it's like, my goodness, this person gets it. And so I like to talk more about our company, about our vision, about what we do in the community, about what's important to the CEO, about what's important to me, about what's important to the people that you'll be working with. And I want to make sure that you understand that that's a culture. And then let's talk about what you can do in your sales capacity and in your, in your intellect. Uh, because then that's going to mean something to me. Interesting. You know, so, so what would, what would, what would stop somebody from just saying, well, yeah, like if I'm, con if I'm constantly talking about the company culture and I'm painting the picture for the, for the person that wants the job, 
what's it what's going to stop them from just yesing you to death well you do it's it, nothing so part of that <laughs> what, what i left out is that you do want to act well so when you talk about a specific thing in your culture like as an example if this was a sales interview you know i'd be you know i'd be asking you about you know how do you feel when you don't hit it, your quota? What do you do to prepare to hit your number? You know, just different things that are in the day in the life of what this actual job details are looking for. But to me, the culture is more as a, is more of a soft skill uh, example. You know, I would ask some questions to test on empathy. I would ask some questions to to test on uh, just different soft skills. And when I'm talking about what's important to our culture of our company. Winning and ex and and excelling is at the top. That's always going to be the top. That shouldn't be mistaken here. But the window on which we look at it, we believe that if we do these things, we can be successful. But I, I you know, you st somebody's just going to say, "Oh yeah, I totally agree with that." I mean, part of our job is sitting in that chair is to say, mm, "That was BS there," or you know, I, I mean, we have to have some gut. I mean, like it or not, there's gut feeling that comes into hiring people. So it's not a hundred percent win every time, but if you're leading by trying to see if they're a cultural fit, that's going to pan out for you more than leading to see if they're a sales fit. Got it. Would this, and not be everybody's going to agree with that, but I'm just saying that works and you should try that. Okay. Let's give it a whirl. I'm, I'm always down to try something, you know, I'm, I'm just to see what happens. Right. So let's talk about, Let's talk about the wrong questions to ask when it comes to hiring a players. Like, what are some things that we need to be careful of um, to make sure that we don't hire the wrong people? Well, I think um, I, I guess the wrong the wrong person in the sense of um, if I have a sales floor that's very uh, collaborative and there's you know no I mean you want the team effort. There's not these individuals, which I'm not saying one is right or one is the other. It just depends on what you have established. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for some, if you are looking for, look at, this is the way I look at it. There used to be a commercial on TV of this circus clown that was spinning like five plates on these wooden sticks. And the whole time, I don't know, probably an Aflac commercial or something, but the whole time of pushing uh, or, or explaining, he his whole game was always moving on to the next plate to keep it spinning. So I look at sales leadership and building an A-team as you need to have, it's always about having spinning plates. You're not going to have, you know, a, a sales team of five. You're not going to have five alphas on the sales teams. It's not going to happen. You're going to have people at different levels of their career. So if I'm looking for somebody to be that top leader that wants to challenge another top leader or something like that, then I'm going to be in the space of obviously competitive, what pushes them, what drives them, et cetera. And so, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to want to be, um, you know, take me to a situation where you were, you know, fighting, you know, like maybe a run or a swim or something, take me to a situation where you were trying to push somebody out to get to the front. So I don't want to hear about how good you close and what you do. I want to know that when somebody's tapping you in the chest and, and kind of chuckling at you or is, is challenging you to pass somebody, does something trigger in you to want to do that and, and to push ahead and to overcome your competition? And that that's not a violation to culture. We want competitive people in that. We just want to know he's not going to stick out his leg and trip that person who's running. We just want to know he's not going to shove him down, that he's going to find something within he or she is going to find something within themselves to push them. So when you're looking for a talent, um, they need to be competitive. And, and I, and I think they have to understand, um, there's a term called go getter and go giver. There's a gentleman named Bob Berg who wrote a book on all these sales things. And, you know, you, you have to understand, I, I would ask, people, why they think people buy from them. And if they answer people buy from me because they believe they'll be better off by doing so than by not doing so, then they get the fact that you're giving value to people that you sell. So when I'm looking for an 18 person, cultural fit, and they have to understand that the, the benefit and the value to a sale is to the customer, not to them pushing over a number. Fair, fair, fairly said. Now, <clears throat> let's look at somebody that's hiring a service-based business okay. to come in and deliver something of high ticket, right? Uh -huh. So they're going to invest 25, 30, 40, 50 plus thousand dollars. And they want to make sure that this is the A player that they say they are, right? What should somebody 
be doing to make sure that when they invest that kind of money, they're picking the right person? So I'm looking at a complex sale process. You know, your ask is, you know, not $5,000 for the month. I mean, this is like a data center, you know, migration. This is some kind of $500,000. I mean, this is a big ticket item. And yeah, so it doesn't have to be 500 K. I mean, let's let, like I mentioned, like, let, because I, I want people to get a better understanding of uh, paying for something high ticket. Okay. Right. And, and, and getting, because that 500 K they're going to tune out and they're going to say, no, no, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking for some canela, Jesus, the dog, <laughs> you know, this is why this I is, the you name. Gotta, I love the name. Yeah. You gotta love, you gotta love live streaming. Yeah. You know, you never know what's going to come up. Sure. So canela wanted to say hello, everybody. So we'll just give, <laughs> we'll give him the shout out that he deserves. Sure. But I want to help. So th th here's why I'm asking Point the question. Patient. Yep. Right. Yeah. Here's why I'm asking the question, Eric. I sell a high ticket product, right? And I want to make sure that people understand when you go to buy something high ticket, that you should be doing X, Y, Z before you purchase that, that something of that caliber. Mm -hmm. So I want them to understand that that's a big investment. And in order to make that investment, you need to do X, Y, Z first, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just helping them become better investors, if you will, in high ticket products or services. So that's why I asked the question. Yeah. So for me, if I was looking for an A player in that space, um, the the first thing I, I, what I'd what I'd want to make sure is is that they're capable of generating their own leads. That they're for, regardless if the company can feed them leads or not. The bottom line is, if the faucet's turned off, can you survive? can't do you know how to prospect do you know how to get appointments do you know how to follow up do you know the value proposition do you know everything that you need to know to close business that, that's the first thing that an every a player knows how to do now the second thing is do you know how to do that in my space so if it's a really you know space that's really targeted and requires years of skill sets then that a player is going to have a book of business of people that he's earned a right to say hey Henry, this is what I'm doing now. I'd love to talk to you about it. So you got this book of business that you can go sit down. You know how to generate your own business. You got a book of business. Those are two high level things. So when I'm looking for an A player, I want to get those two uh, capabilities there. The third thing I would do on an A player, and this is going to put a little bit of humor, I think, hopefully uh, into people's uh, heads here, but grab the book Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss and ask them why this is a great sales book. It, it you can, you'll remember reading it or having your parents read it. You could certainly look through it in five minutes, but that is probably the most underrated sales book ever written. The, the, the Sam I am understands the importance of a dynamic first meeting. You know, he's riding in with the sign. I am Sam. He understands that every time somebody says no, you're resilient. You put a smile on your face, you come back, but you change the offer. Okay. You didn't want it here. I get that. I heard you, but how about now? Okay, no, go back to the drawing board. How about now? You're not getting ruffled. You're staying persistent. And the key thing he does is he finds a way to get the product into the client's hand. And that results in a sale at the end. And he's built a relationship along the way. So uh, not to get, you know, not to get uh, children bookish here, but I'm telling you, anybody who understands sales and how to be successful We'll see all the sales messages screaming out of green eggs and ham. And so I think that would be a, a question to ask somebody. I love it. That's that, those are some great questions to ask, you know, you know, just to add in, you know, a couple of things that I'm looking for, if I'm going to spend that kind of money on, on, on a, on a service or a product is mm -hmm. let me see some results. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. I left this, that out, but yeah, isn't that important? Right. Let me see some of the work that you've established and, and the results that you've gotten for other people. I don't necessarily care if it's in the same industry as me, because if you're in the same industry as, uh, as me, or you're very specific to my industry, I'm nervous that you've done for me what you've done for everybody else in the industry. So I don't necessarily, I, I actually look at it as a good thing sometimes to hire somebody that's outside of the industry that that I'm looking to hire because they'll give me an outside perspective that and they'll give me a different angle that somebody that's specialized in my industry may give me so right. Right. just looking at it both ways now 
of course, credibility and authority and the results that you've gotten for other people, but you got to make sure, I think, to your point before, is that person's personality or is that company's personality or culture going to going to jive with mine? Right. I think that's huge. Right. I think so too. Yeah. 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 I think so too, because when, when it comes down to, when we talk about culture, listen, I'll put myself in a, in the startup I was in uh, about eight years ago. Um, you know, you need five sales reps. You, you can't spend, let, let's be realistic. Okay. I mean, it's great. I'm talking culture. I'm talking all this stuff. I mean, there's the way we want to do it on paper. There's a textbook way to do it. And then sometimes there's the real world that you have to do while you're getting along it, to that point. And, and, and while you're practicing and keeping all that stuff in mind, but if you need to fill five people, you're launching a new sales division, you need feet on the street, you need some marketing pressure, you need some sales pressure, then you know, the cultural fit is going to better serve you than somebody who said, I can come in there and crush it because, you know, everybody thinks they crushed it, but everybody's leaving a job that they were at. So, so what gives there, you know, if they're coming to you by finding you, but the reality is if you have the core skills to sell and you understand what our culture is and you are hungry and you want to contribute. And, and that's another reason why I like talking about the culture, because I, I like to know if they, you know, if they see it, if, you know, if I see it in their eyes that they believe it, but if you, if you believe all those things, I, you know, maybe it's the arrogant side in all of us. I think we can make people and help people sell what we're selling if they've got the core values. So, I mean, I would look for people who, who have a few of those traits if I needed to grab five and I'm fully aware that of those five, if I'm lucky, three are going to stick and maybe two, I'm going to have to find another job for in the company or even replace, but you know, you got to start and you got to, you, you got to be consistent and make a, a decision that you're not going to waver. This is the way I'm going to interview my people when I'm looking for people. I love it. Joshua, Joshua Easter says, Eric Reed, green eggs and ham. Why is this the great sales book? Most under, why is, why is this a great sales book? Most underrated sales book. Should I That's answer? All. <laughs> That's awesome. And then he also said, I will, I will only hire somebody to work directly for me if I would work for that person. Mark that's Zuckerberg. a, that's a great, that's a great observation. I, when I think that came from Mark is that, was he quoting? Was that? Yeah, was he was Mark? quoting yeah. Mark. Yeah. As upper yeah. Zuckerberg. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know him as Mark. I don't mean to throw that out there like that, but yeah, I listen, this is one of the, I, I just throw this out there because I, I like, you know, listen, I give advice, but you know, the, anybody can give advice from experience. The thing is, is that the, the difference is it's not that any, it's not like everything works for everybody. The point is, is that you have to try things and there's no magic bullet to being a, let's, let's take us not to offend sales leaders, but there's no magic bullet. You got to be consistent in what you do. Something works different for every different type of, uh, you know, you as a leader with the people that you hire. So the, the, the last thing, just by virtue of that statement is, and I think this goes to what Joshua just sent out there is if you don't, you know, work for them, then work for you, even equally as important if you don't know who you are, you can't hire people to work for you. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen to that. So, you know, when you're hiring a players, you got to make sure that they're going to jive with your culture, mm -hmm. that you have your culture established and that you're actually walking the walk and talking the talk. Cause you mm -hmm. can say one thing and do something else and your team and the people that you work for or that are working for you are going to see right through that. Absolutely. And that's where the distrust is going to come in. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, one, one caution, Henry, I, I don't know how we are in time, but one caution I wanted to put out is I see this a lot and, and, I, and, and to be very transparent early in my career, I learned this because it was a mistake that I made. I brought in somebody who was just a rock star and they sold like crazy. But I knew in that interview that they're going to have some management challenges and I've already got this existing culture. And so it's easy to get blinded by that quick dollar. And then we get focused on managing that person and we forget about the rest of the team that we had there. And so the other danger with bringing in somebody who's not a good fit isn't so much managing them, but there's other people who are watching the way that you manage this person. And so that's just something to keep in the back of your head. If you're going to take a chance on somebody who's a great sales rep, you want that airplay a player, you think they're close to a cultural fit, you think they could be a cultural fit, you need to watch the rest of your team for the first 60 to 90 days because you're gonna you're gonna pick up on a lot from them. And doesn't mean you have to respond to it, but you need to be aware of what's going on in your in your universe. Yeah, I agree a thousand percent. 
Right. I agree a thousand percent. I think one of the other things that I would, I would do if I'm hiring an A player is I'm checking out their social media. Oh yeah. I'm checking out their social media. And I mean, people do this all the time, but like, I want to see how they interact on Facebook. I want to mm-hmm. see what kind of content's out there. If I Google their name, what's going to show up, right? We yeah. had this clubhouse conversation the other day about this. Like, um, what if you're so exclusive that nothing shows up on Instagram or nothing shows up on Google? Um, is that, does that work in your favor or against your favor? Well, for no. me, you know, uh, if I don't find anything about you, I'm scratching my head going, well, then how good are you? You know, why is it, why, why aren't you already the best kept secret? I don't know if that's necessarily a good play, right? but definitely look at their social media and see how they communicate with other people. Look at their work, see what, see if you, if it jives with you, what kind of, what kind of physical feeling does it give you? Right. What kind of emotional feeling does it give you? Um, you're like you said before, Eric, your gut's going to tell you your in, your intuition is going to say something. Yeah. It, and I wouldn't it, necessarily ignore that. So you have to make a decision on it, but you need to put it in the mix. And if you're looking for referrals for a players, which you will do, I mean, yeah, it's great to get a previous manager, but I, mean, I don't really need that. I mean, I, I mean, maybe one or two things that I'd ask on ethics. I want to talk to four. I mean, if I'm going a player, serious money, serious back end uh, package, if you execute, man, you can't even be considered for that unless you got five, you know, minimum of five, hopefully 10 people that when I get them on the phone, you're going to tell me that guy's going to set sales records for you and he's going to do it with integrity. Right. I mean, right. show me some references. And then one crazy thing I, I, I've never done, but I, what a client of mine has done is they've had, uh, they've had existing clients. They've had the prospects reach out to existing clients and just give them a sales pitch. Ah, interesting. So, yeah, interesting. Mean, whether or not no, I do that or not, I'm not sure, but I know that people have done that. So yeah, I know on my on my website, we added something in very similar to what you just said. It says uh, client references, and it's mm-hmm. a tab. When you hit the navigation, it's a tab, and you hit client references, and it literally says right there, if you're on the fence about working with Henry, we invite you to call these people, right. and there's names and phone numbers and, and emails, and... I'm a, I'm continuously adding to that list, right? But yeah. it's very very important because I don't want to I don't want to bring anybody on that doesn't trust me. It's a, it's just a bad it, it's a, it's going to be a bad outcome, yeah, right? Absolutely, yeah. Right. So I want I want them to do their homework. I want them to vet me. I want them to feel confident and comfortable with the investment because when you do that, you're going to make some really great decisions that are going to propel and move your business forward. You can't hire an A player with your last buck and expect them to, like you mentioned, right? The silver bullet or the home run or the grand slam. You're really setting yourself up, excuse me, for a disaster. So when you hire an A player, you got to be confident. This guy's going to ring my doorbell again. <laughs> oh, no, he's not. Okay. The dog goes crazy when the doorbell rings. <laughs> we got lucky. But to, you know, to that point. You know, I, you do have to be confident. But, you know, don't we all love to find that person who didn't know how good they could be? And, you know, and, and that doesn't come with experience that comes with referrals that comes with understanding. Um, one tip I used to do for anybody who's looking for mid to, to entry level sales, not when I say entry, I don't mean entry entry, but, um, I used to grab people from enterprise rent a car all the time. I used to grab people from Nabisco back in the day. There's a few companies you can look up, up online. There's a few companies that are ridiculous, rigorous training and their employees just are animals and they're, they've cut their teeth there and they're looking to get out and they just really embrace the opportunity to continue their career path growth. So I do look for uh, certain people who've worked for other companies because I know how rigid and what their expectations are of their employees. And I know it's a fit with what I'm looking for. So, you know, you can cheat a little bit and run some cultural fit searches with other companies that that are having the success model that you're looking for and you'll find information on the type of employees that they hire if they're larger companies. It's fantastic. 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 So I got some I got one off the wall, not off the wall <laughs> question, right? 
But but I, I like to throw some curveball questions at the yeah. end of the show just to kind of shake things up a li- little bit and, and 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 bring some flavor, some more flavor into the show. So this is completely random. I use this app and it gives me some great questions. All and right, so excellent. Th- this one is what have you read online recently that inspired you? Um well, I I actually read. I I'm doing a um, I'm doing a, a lecture at Indiana University uh, Kelly School of Business uh, for an undergraduate class on attitude and persuasive communication. So I I've been reading a lot of stuff on that going uh, into it, and there's some works from a professor there named uh, Mans- Mansour Kamatov, and um, it, the. What's inspired me is to understand that the responsibility, so to speak, of of marketing, you walk out of the house today and you've got, when you're in the conscious world, you've got thousands of companies trying to uh, persuasively change your attitude on things, their product, some kind of information that's out there. And so what's inspired me is to realize that intended or not intended, everything we say, everything we put out there, everything that we do um, has an impact on people's attitudes. And so I, I think I'm just realizing that, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a journalist that's read by millions of people. They would take a little bit more seriously, but the people I touch in my daily life want to make sure that I understand that information I put out, there's a responsibility to, to what it is that I'm putting out. Mm, It's beautiful. That is beautiful. So Eric, where can people learn more about you and get into your world? And so that you know, they could explore potential business opportunities sure. or, or whatever. So, uh, two ways. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm on, uh, LinkedIn. Um, you know, my, my daughter runs is launching an Instagram, uh, and she wants to get me on TikTok. So soon I'll be able to say that, but we have, we have inst. So I have a podcast. If I can talk, just mention that real quick. It's called take five, the rethink marketing podcast, a partner and I have been doing it uh, for going on a year, we're approaching uh, about 75 episodes. We get some really awesome guests on it. And him and I have a banter a couple times uh, a month too, of just a 10 minute quick hit on a marketing thing. Um, it's just a kind of cool podcast. So if, if you're interested in sales and marketing, it's just something else to maybe check out in addition to all the cool stuff you do, uh, Henry. And then, um, and that's just the podcast. That's just information. That's just, you know, I like to coach. I like to teach. I like to be in the, in the now of the conversation. That's what that's all about. I also uh, run a business called read five group, which is where we do fractional marketing. I work with companies that, uh, as I mentioned, are kind of in that crossroads of man, do I need to hire a $150,000 marketing director? Or can I get like high quality services for like 20 hours a month to help me get where I want to be? And then eventually we'll be in a position to hire that. I do that on the sales and marketing side. And that's simply read five group.com. That's read R E E D five group G R the number five dot com so read five group.com those are the those are the two ways in linkedin really and twitter you'll find me there awesome. i should clarify that instagrams for the podcast not for me i'm, I'm not a i'm not a uh, self uh, indulgent uh, instagrammer uh my uh, my daughter helps me there with uh try to get uh, people to engage with the podcast so i love it i love it i love it eric i'm excited to come on your show yeah uh, we got that booked i'm excited yeah. i'm, I'm We're excited to have you yeah, I'm 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 gonna make sure that my community sees and 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 gets access to that as soon as it publishes. So really awesome. pumped for that. And Eric, what a great conversation today. I mean, despite my dog going crazy and <laughs> in the background. And, me. Oh man, you know, what a great conversation. And and guys, I hope that you get the point that we're trying to communicate with you today when it comes to hiring a players to build your brand. Like I just want you to become more conscious. I want you to become uh, more educated. I, I, and I want you to become more savvy investors of people and resources. And that's why I have Eric here today because to get to six figures is one skill set. To get to seven figures, it's another skill set. And that skill set involves a lot of human resource. Mm. Okay. And in order to do that, you have to know who to hire 
and who not to hire. So I want to make sure that you guys have a better understanding of how to spotlight an A player and how one may be positioning himself as an A player or or herself as an A player and really isn't. So make sure that you take into consideration what we spoke about. Um, I, we got one more question here, guys. I think it's it's we got a live question from YouTube, and I and I want to I want to highlight it before we go. I I got five minutes, so we got to make this sharp, right? So, guys, what are the most important things to you when you're looking for a certain agency or brand to do a job? Let's say you need an app for your business. What are the key arguments? Well, for for me, uh, you know, and I, I've done this as as a marketing director in my uh, in my career. Um, you know, most agencies now are are pretty niche. So if uh, you know, everybody's probably going to hit with somebody who wants to come and design a website for them. Maybe they can do their paid search, etc. There's certain things that aren't unique to the business, other than you know their value of understanding the different levels that you can do a Google AdWords search. So I, really, their acumen on the whole digital space. But in, in the idea of an app or something, for me, I, you know, I, I select. I've selected agencies in the past to do the work for me. If I was, I'll go to a liquor distributor example. I want to be at the top of your list of people you're giving attention to. I don't want to be a, a, a tier three. And so I usually look, if I'm a small business, I usually look for more niche uh, or niche um, uh, agency who's really going to, who, who, who I'm going to be a top client for them, or at least treat me like, well, that, that's the number one thing for me. That's how I, that's how I approach it. Hmm. Let's, I'm going to bring up the question again. So guys, what are your most important things to you when you're looking to hire a certain agency or brand to do a job? Let's say you need an app for your business. All right. So what I'm looking for is demonstration of expertise. I want to be able to go to a website or an Instagram account or something, and I want to see your work. However, your work isn't enough. Your work isn't enough. I actually want to see you as the agency owner present i want to see how i want to see you on camera or i want to hear you on a podcast and i want to get a better understanding of who you are as a human being because you can like we talked about before eric you can be the best app developer in the world but if you're a jo mm -hmm. and in new jersey we call it a jerk off. Yeah. I'm They're not hiring. I'm not hiring you. Right. Okay. So I, I and excuse my language, but I think I, I say that with intention. That is very, very important to me because if I can follow you on Instagram or any social platform and see that you do great work, but also I can vibe with you like you're like you're actually somebody that I could go out That's to dinner with and really have a great conversation with. And like I could see you molding into our culture. It's like you're hired. Yeah. It's like the it's a win win situation, in my opinion. So that's what I would look for. Great question. I, I couldn't let it go. I couldn't. That was a good it. question. Yeah. Yeah. I this think turn times are important too, Henry. I, you know, I've, I've struggled with an agency that uh, everything was good. And then, you know, turn to me, I'm just very, I'm, turn times on getting asks taken care of are important to me. So I, I would just want to define what they're, what they're, and I know that everybody's doing that, but uh, agencies that don't do quick turn times are not people that I want to do business with. I, I got to be too fluid, too fast in, in the space that, that I'm in. So. Agreed. Yeah. There's there. I want to see system and process and I want to yeah. see, you know, what's estimated turnaround time and things like that. Yeah. Like we're, we're very upfront with our clients, like we're 90 days or less, you know what I mean? Depending on how responsive you are. Right. So, um, but that's how we've nailed it down. Cause that's a big question we get. How long is this process going to take? There's a lot involved. Yeah. About 90 days. We got it down to about 90 days or less, depending on how responsive you are. So yeah. To your point, excellent. But yeah, UX Patrick, I am looking for that personal connection because I know that if I can vibe with that person and I can connect with that person on a personal level and they and they and on top of it they do great work, that's going to be a phenomenal project and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I know when you put fun 
into the mix, the work always comes out better. It always comes out better. So I am always qualifying, you know, I'm always qualifying my clients on the other end to make sure that I could vibe with them just as much as they can vibe with me. So Eric, I got to run because I got another interview to jump on, yeah, but there you go. Man, thank you so much. Make I sure really you, enjoyed it. Thank you. Make sure you guys check out um, Eric and all the, we'll have all the show notes and stuff all linked up. So um, have an amazing day guys. And we will catch you on the next episode real soon. Take care. Thanks.